Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning, we're going to talk about how to pay off your student loans fast. So let's jump right into it. So now that you've determined what portion of your student loans are attributed to being federal student loans and what portion are attributed to being private student loans, now it's important to determine the order of debt payoff and how to do that as fast as possible. So the first area of debt pay down and pay off that you are going to want to start with are your actual private student loans. So these are student loans that may have been a consolidation loan through a bank or maybe a financial institution or financed in some other way outside of the federally backed student loans. So why these should come first is not due to the interest rate necessarily. It has more to do with seasonality in regards to the pending uncertainty around forgiveness. Now, if you have a lot of student loans, you might as well start with those you know will not qualify for student loan forgiveness. Now, the next step would be to order that student loan or those student loans based on the balance that you owe. So this is referred to as the debt snowball method. This is looking at your smallest balance and, and, and basically putting it in order, smallest balance to largest balance, which focuses on knocking out that lowest one first and then working your way up to the largest balance over time. Now, you could be favoring the debt avalanche method instead, but in this case, the interest rate should be close enough for the difference in percentage to not really make a big difference. And so that's why it's it's neither here nor there whether you decide to go the debt snowball approach or the debt avalanche approach. Uh, it's just important that you actually start. So this may be a little bit painful to go through the process of actually figuring out how much you owe and to whom and when it's due, especially if you've almost forgotten about these student loans, being that uh, the federal student loans have had about a year and a half of forbearance. Uh, but it's important for you to look at your situation, to know where you're at, and then to be able to evaluate from that standpoint of what your situation is, how much you owe, to whom, when it is due, and at what percentage rate it will be due at. Now, what is key at this point is to not add to your debt. Prevent taking on more student loan debt by taking on a position like a TA, which is a teacher's assistant, on your university campus, your college campus, or your, or your uh, community college campus. And this allows you to attend school and, and have a significantly reduced tuition rate, or in some cases, it's completely free. So check into that. Now, many people feel like they can't do both school and work full time or, or be able to do those two and do them well. And I would say, yes, it's hard, but it's absolutely doable. So I would test this theory to see what you're capable of, how much you're able to uh, you know, focus on school, get the grades you need to get, but also be able to work on gaining experience. Now, this would allow you to pay the rest of the way through college. This would allow you to be selective with the jobs during college to try and find a job that would actually attribute to your career field that you're looking to go into and then be able to have that experience that gives you more options upon graduation, but also prevents you from getting into more debt while you're going through the process. So I would encourage you to look at those types of options. This is something I took advantage of in order to prevent going into uh, more student loan debt than I had at the time. Now, if you take this route, it will enable you to then search for jobs that have tuition reimbursement or other programs to assist you in this process. Those that will help you in the process of getting a higher education related to your job or field uh, that, uh, that the company maybe operates in already uh, that would value your skill set and value that education according to your skill set. Now, the other component is that you will want to look at your discretionary income as of current. Looking before you change jobs at where you're at, what are you operating off of? 
Are you operating off of a budget or a plan to spend so you know what is going out and how much and uh, and also what is coming in? Or do you not really know where you're at in time and space on that? So figuring out how much you have left over after all the bills are paid is especially important. Now, if you don't have a budget, you really need one, especially in the season of life where you are focused on getting out of debt. You wanna make sure that you have a plan in order to get out of debt. So this will put some guardrails on your money. This will help you to be realistic about where you're spending money and what you can actually afford to spend money on. Now, once you know what is coming in and going back out, then you're able to reapply those aspects, those funds that you were spending money on that maybe you didn't value as much as you thought you would, and you can reapply it to paying down your debt, assuming, of course, that that becomes a re, you know a reality from a standpoint of a focus point for you to get out of that student loan debt. Now this can be done without even addressing your income. If you cannot seem to cut any more out of your lifestyle each month. Now let's look at a few offense focused approaches. So taking new ground and going out and increasing your income. And let's look at some options around that. Now, switching jobs to increase your responsibility to look to increase both experience as well as income can be a really good approach to taking more ground. Now, this will build in greater margin between what it is that is actually coming in and what is going back out. Now, this is a natural way to allow you to use those resources to pay down debt as long as you don't inflate your lifestyle. Now, if you are in a season of life where you are not married and you do not have children and um, and you have a little bit more flexibility, I typically recommend a form of house hacking. Now, this would allow you to purchase a home or maybe lease a property and rent out the rooms via sublease month to month or maybe some kind of platform like Airbnb for short-term rentals and be able to take that money and apply it to your housing expenses to drastically reduce those expenses or eliminate them altogether. Now, typically for most people, their housing expenses are the most expensive line item within their budget. So this gives you the opportunity to apply that to debt. Now, another opportunity would be to utilize your vehicle as a means of income. Now, this could mean that you are renting it out on Turo, that you're driving for Uber or Lyft, or simply buying a vehicle with intentionality to make sure that that second line item, typically the second most expensive line item for you, is not losing money. So adding a side hustle like Turo, starting a small business or an online business, consulting in some manner, maybe even tutoring, or looking at other ways to increase your income will be a great start. Now, if you only have federal student loans, use the opportunity to take these side hustles, to take this um, offense approach of gaining more ground and gaining and your ability to make more income and use that to pay down your principal balance while interest is not accumulating and you are not being required to pay a minimum monthly payment. Now, I believe that you have a great opportunity right now to get a head start on getting this, uh, this debt paid down, especially being that the likelihood of a large rollout of student loan forgiveness seems to be dwindling by the day. So I would just encourage you to not just wait on the sidelines, uh, but start taking action, especially being that that amount, if there is some level of forgiveness, will probably be relatively small. Now, finally, it's really important to look at those private student loans to be sure that the rates are reasonable. Looking at those rates will allow you to figure out whether it is time to refinance those so that you have more going towards principal each month as you pay that down. But I would be careful not to refinance the federal student loans as this may prevent you to, you know, from the ability to take advantage of ongoing loan forbearance from the interest standpoint or any portion of loan forgiveness. Now, these are some approaches that you can take to really work in being proactive to restructure your finances so that you're taking advantage of paying as much from a principal standpoint down on these student loans as quickly as possible. Now, my call to action day comes down to taking a look at what you owe, 
on the private student loans as well as the federal student loans and take one or more of these options to expedite the process of paying down or paying off these loans. Now, the quicker that you are able to pay these off, the faster you're able to not have student loan uh, payments on a monthly basis, reducing the ability to um, to live your life. You know, uh, you're restricting your lifestyle. And so I would just encourage you to go through this process. Now, if this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow.